Hello everyone. With you, Kruvuli Andrew Charlie. In this video, we'll talk about how to transfer color from texture to fur in Arnold Renderer for 3DSS Max. Also, I'll show you how to use the more advanced method of painting any part of your hair or fur in Ornitrix, Tricks, and how to render it correctly in the Arnold Renderer. We will also test the rendering with the denoiser for the normal and the close-up view. Just a reminder that you can become a channel sponsor and get a 95 discount on all my assets, voiceovers in another language, etc. Also, if this is your first time on this channel and you want to know what it's about, as well as support me, watch the channel's trailer and read all the information in the attached commentary. And please, don't forget to like and subscribe. I would be very grateful for that. Now, let's go to watch this episode. So, as usual, I took the same scene as in the previous tutorials. The only difference is that I did the Ox Arnold modifier to make it render correctly. In Arnold, as well as in Octane Renderer, also work two methods of color transfer onto fur. At first, I will show the usual method of transferring color from a texture. So, use the M key to open the Material Editor. Next, go to Material, Arnold, Surface, Standard Hair. After that, right-click again and go to Maps, Arnold, Texture, Image. Then, we connect this node to the base color and diffuse color slots. And the final touch is to add the desired texture to the file name slot. But, that is not all. If we run the renderer now, we cannot see the color of the fur. To fix this, press M again and increase the diffuse weight value. Then, as usual, we increase the anisotropic and azimuthal roughness values. For the fur, it is usually a value of 0 and 5 tenths. Also, do not forget to decrease the melanin and melanin redness to 0 in that way, we get the color from the texture. Of course, if you want, you can experiment with the diffuse weight value. For example, set its value to 0 0.3. And, that is all I wanted to tell you about the first method of dyeing. It is very simple, and you shouldn't have any issues. For the second method, I prepared such a scene. You can prepare your own. So, the first thing we need to do is create the paint channels. To do this, you have to select the brush mode. For this, you can press the 3 key. Next, in the Painting Options tab, select Color RGB for channel, as this will come in handy when selecting colors and when painting. After that, go down to the Guide Channels tab. And in Current Channel, we need to add three channels using the Add button. As soon as you click this button, a special window will appear. Here, be sure to choose Perfect X. Then we write the name, color underscore R. Now, copy the name with the key combination, Control plus C, because it will be useful for us, and press the Add Channel button. After that, we need to add two more channels. That is again, click Add. Select Perfect X. Insert the copied name and change to color underscore G. Click Add Channel again. Repeat the same action for the channel color underscore B. So in current channel, you will have three channels. Color underline R, color underline G, color underline B. So we need to select the color channel underline R to start painting. The other channels will automatically be colored in the desired color. Next, choose any color to dye hair. Before we start painting the hair, I want to tell you about how to change the radius of the brush. You can do this by holding down Shift plus B plus left mouse button and moving it up or down. Let us proceed to some complicated coloring. Now, we have painted over all the hair, but you can also select any individual bundle. So, I will isolate this part and edit it a bit. By the way, please be aware that while you are painting the selected part, the color displayed looks slightly different. 
as the color of the selection and the color of the paint is mixed. But do not worry, once you deselect this object, the color will be displayed correctly. Now, choose any color and either tip of the selected clump. At the same time, if we do not want to paint on other objects, turn on the option effect selected only. And then, it will work only on the selected object. So, let us practice once again. Press Q and select the desired clump. Then, activate the paintbrush again to dye the hair. And paint in any place of the selected object. Thus, we get different colors. And what you left in gray will be rendered that way. So, if now I run the renderer, then I will not be able to see the hair. To see them, you need to assign the Oxonald modifier on top of Edit Guides. Now, if we run OPR Render, we will see the hair, but without the color we painted. We are going to fix that now. So, press M to open the Material Editor. Next, create a standard hair material and assign it to our object. After that, be sure to turn off Melanin and Melanin Redness. As usual, we set the roughness and azimuthal roughness values to 0 and 5 tenths. We set the diffuse weight value to 1, for now, because we will experiment with it later. So, for everything to render correctly, we need to create an additional user data RGB node. It must be connected to the base color and diffuse color slots. Next, in the attribute line, write the word, color. After that, close the material editor, select the Oxonald modifier, and select all channels with the letter V, in the channel window. Therefore, we are telling Ornatrix and Arnold, please render these channels. And now, if I run the renderer, I will see these colors. Where we did not paint, will be black, because diffuse weight equals 1. If you decrease this value, you will see a grey color. Let us paint these parts so that there is color there as well. So, if we run the renderer, we see these colors. Now, let us test the rendering speed on this scene. I will use the standard settings that I usually do in my renders. I think that a resolution of 1920 by 1080 pixels will be enough for us. Then, go to the Arnold Renderer tab and immediately activate the Adaptive Sampling option. The S Samples Max is equal to 30. Adaptive Threshold is 0.9 thousandths. Also, turn on Progressive Render option. In the System tab, I select GPU rendering and basically, these are all the settings that are needed for our test renderer. Next, run a render test of the first view. So, the rendering time on the 3080 with 16 gigabytes of video memory, with the settings I showed, 3 minutes 59 seconds. This is the rendering time, without denoising. But we can turn it on and reduce the number of samples a little bit to speed up the calculation. So denoising is on. Now let's go back to the render settings. Here you can put 8 samples in adaptive and for camera AA for samples. And then run the renderer. In the end, with these settings, the rendering finished in 21 seconds, which is 11 times faster. Okay, now let's render close up. I'll temporarily turn on the IPR to see what I get and keep adjusting the camera. Next, go into the rendering settings and make the same settings.
So, the rendering time of close-up is 39 seconds. Let's look at the results on a 1 to 1 scale. And we can see that the result is quite good. Of course it is clear that you can increase the sampling, but if you need to render something quickly, I think that 39 seconds is an fine time. Also, for example, I'm not satisfied with such a dark version, then you can quickly correct the exposure in the frame buffer settings. You can also add post-processing layers and adjust as your heart desires. That's basically all I wanted to show in this video. If you liked this video, do not forget to like and subscribe to the channel that you do not miss new episodes. If this is your first time on this channel, then here, you can learn all the tricks and secrets of 3D grooming in order tricks. Also, get your questions answered and get inspired by references from the games. Subscribe and write in the comments how long you do 3D and why you chose this field. What influenced this? If you like what I do, I would be very grateful for any donation to PayPal at the link in the description. Buying my models from CG Trader or ArtStation. As well as the purchase of any of the plugins at the links in the attached commentary. What's in it for you? It's very simple. If enough money is collected per month, I will be able to devote my full time to creating lessons for you, not 3 hours a day. Which, as you have already noticed, not enough for the first release of new episodes. Also, don't forget to check out the YouTube community, as I share there all kinds of news, uploading answers to questions, talking about the time spent time on lessons, and so on. And, of course, don't forget about my Instagram, where I upload all my work and work in progress.